So this is the video for the lab motion. Um, on your piece of graph paper, you're going to do a couple things. First, you're going to answer the question of what you observe when the cart goes down the track. Next, you're going to make a data table with time points and position points. And finally, you're going to make a position versus time graph. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is just simply observe what happens um, as this cart travels down the track. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. I'm just going to observe what happens. So on your paper, answer the question, what did you observe? So in class, we agree that measuring the speed is pretty difficult, but we can measure the position and time. So your task is to collect data of position and time of the cart as it goes down the track. So let's start by making a data table. We know we're going to measure on our x here and our y here. That's how we always set it up. On the x, we're going to measure time. And of course, we're going to measure that in seconds. On the y, we'll measure position. And we'll use centimeters for position. Now the question is, what kind of time interval are we going to run? Well, the cart runs for about five seconds. So let's choose every second we're going to plot a point. So we know at time zero where it will be at. Time one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're going to try to find the position at each one of these times. So now we're going to try to calculate all these positions. So at time zero, we were at zero centimeters. I watch, you can see it's a little blurry there, but we are about three centimeters at one second. So now two seconds here. Pause it. We're at about 14.5 centimeters there at two seconds. You go down to three seconds. You get to about 36.5 centimeters on the ruler there. At four seconds, 61.5 centimeters. At five seconds, we're all the way down at 94.5 centimeters. And at our six second, we're at 136.5 centimeters. So you can see now we've got this data table all filled in. Uh, we noticed that obviously where it started, it was at zero centimeters. Um, we went down, we calculated every position all the way down. We actually added a six second there. We had six seconds in that, where we were all the way down at 136.5 centimeters. I know it was a little difficult to read there. It was a little blurry um, on the video, but these are some accurate uh, positions for each one of these times. So make sure you got this data, data table written down. Okay, so obviously after we get some data, What's our next step? We're going to make a graph. So we're going to plot this position versus time graph just as we have in last chapter. Uh, we'll put time on our x-axis. We'll put position on our y-axis. So OK, so I've got my data table copied down over here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to, well, first got to scale our axes, sorry. So we know that on our x-axis, we need to scale out six seconds. So I think if we can go about every, let's say, let's say every five. One, two, three, four, five. Like a one. One, two, three, four, five. Like a two, and so on. Okay. And now we'll need to scale our position. Um, on our position, we got to get all the way up to 136.5. So we need to have this whole thing. We want to make it as big as possible. We want this to go all the way up to 136.5. So I think if we consider every box to be five centimeters, we should get a pretty good scale here. So this is going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'll make a little mark at 25 there. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I'm going to keep going up like this. All right, great. Now we've got a great graph. It covers all the way out to six seconds, all the way up to 150. So that's in our range of 136. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to plot all these points. So our first point is going to be at zero time, zero seconds. That's our first data point there. At one second, we're going to be at three. So remember, this is five. So we're going to go up just about a little over halfway and make our dot there. Okay. 
At two seconds, we're about 14. So we're going to go one, two, that's 15 there. So we want to go just under that one. We'll make 15. At three seconds, we're at 36.5. So for three, there's 25, there's 30, there's 35. We're 1.5 above that. So we're just going to go a little bit above. Make our three second plot. Four seconds at 61.5, so I get to four. Here's 50, here's 60. Again, 1.5 above that, so we'll just go out there. At five seconds, 94.5, so five seconds. So we just go all the way up. There's 100 there, so we're, there's 95, 94.5, so we're just under that right there. And at six seconds, we're gonna be at 136. So six all the way up. Make sure you stay right on that line. Here's 125, here's 130, here's 135. Oh, just missed our data table, that's good, great. All right, so we got all our data points put on here. Now, if I ask you the question, do you think a linear line would fit all this data very well, your answer is probably going to be no. And that's actually the right answer. No longer is this a linear relationship. We can see that these data points start out to be a little shallow and they get more and more steep as they go on. So instead of drawing a linear line, we're going to draw a line that fits this curve as best it can. So I'm going to go ahead and try to draw my best curve line. That's pretty good, but it gets pretty close to the data points. That fits those. So here we go, we got our data and our graph all put together. We've got a relationship between the position on the Y and our time on the X. All right, so here's our graph. I touched it up a little bit, got our data table. You can see this relationship really well. So now I'm gonna really break this down and analyze this graph. So what I wanna do first is show you a picture of a graph from last chapter. Okay, so let's look at this graph. This is a graph of what one of you may have got in one of your groups from last chapter, the buggy lab. Let's break this down and look at a couple things that are different between this graph. So, first we notice that um, there's a different starting point, right? We agreed that the point where it hits the y-axis is our starting point. So right here we have a starting point of negative 30. On our cart graph, we start at a point zero. So we start right at the origin. That was because on the track, we had a ruler that started at zero. So we might as well start at zero, call that our origin. The biggest difference between these two graphs is of course the line that relates the data. Here we have a linear line, a straight line that, that relates all of the data that we had. Whereas in this graph, we had a curved line. So let's start to break that down and what that means. So if I was to look at this graph and ask you, what was the average velocity of this graph? Well, we know that on a position versus time graph, the velocity is simply the slope of the line. So if I asked you what was the velocity, the average velocity over the whole time period of this graph, you could do a number of things. Um, Let's see, we could start here, we could go to five seconds. We could take this point and this point, right? We could say, well, what's the slope between these two points? What's the rise over the run? So if we're at negative 30, we got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75, right? 75 to get to that point. And we had a run of five. So our slope here, is 75 divided by five, okay? So that's just the total slope going over. So we found our slope is 75. Remember we had to put centimeters here over seconds here, and we get 15 centimeters per second. Now, if I was to ask you to do a more simplified one, could you use this point here? And here, could you do that? Let's see. So we go up 5, 10, 15, and our run of one second, we'd get a slope of 
15 centimeters over one second. And again, we get 15 centimeters per second. So if I ask you the average velocity of this, car, uh, this buggy car from our last chapter, you would notice that anywhere along this line, you are going to get a slope of 15 centimeters per second. Okay? Now, looking at this graph, could you use any two points along this curve to get the same average velocity? The answer is no. So what I'm going to ask you to try to do is I want you to find the average velocity of this cart from six or from sorry from zero to six seconds. Okay, this was our total runtime of our cart here. We need to find the average velocity of that. How are we going to do that? Well. We know that if we have a starting point and a finishing point, we simply just draw a line between these two. Right? This tells us how long did it take out to get to this point, right? The displacement was all the way up to here, and our time was to here. So if we want to find the average velocity, That should be just the rise over the run to this point. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that our last data point is 136.5, and that's at 6 seconds. So if we started at 0 and we went up to 136.5, we would have, I'm just going to draw a little arrow up here, um, 136.5 centimeters, and how long did it take to get that far? Six seconds. So if we take our little calculator here, let's do this, and we do 136.5 and divide that by six seconds, we get 22, let's call it 22.8, 22.8 centimeters per second okay so that's our average velocity it took it took six seconds to go 136.5 centimeters so it's 22.8 centimeters per second on average so now let's consider what that actually means and how helpful that actually is so going back to this graph when we had average velocity of that 15 centimeters per second, that was pretty helpful because that told you exactly how fast it was going for the whole time. On this graph though, that 22.8 centimeters per second, is it really helpful? Let's think about a situation. Um, let's say that you do this experiment in the classroom and someone comes into the class, they didn't see the cart move, and they just ask you, well, what happened? Um, and you say, well, we saw the car go down and it had an average velocity of 22.8 centimeters per second. Think to yourself, is that going to be a very helpful way to explain the motion of the cart to the person that just walked in? The answer is no, because think about it. The cart at first went pretty slow and then it sped up. Right? And if you just tell someone the average velocity, it doesn't consider the fact that there was motion slow in the beginning and fast towards the end. It's just telling you a very uh, averaged out way of describing the motion. So when we talk about this, uh, this increase of speed of the cart, average velocity becomes less and less of an accurate way to describe how the cart is moving. So we need to think about a new way that we can talk about the cart's motion that is kind of like average velocity, but it's a little more precise. So think to yourself, what could be a better way that we could talk about velocity in this case? Well, average velocity, we started at zero. We went all the way out to six seconds. Well, what if we said, OK, but we look at, let's say, between two and three seconds, there was definitely a different velocity than between five and six seconds. So what if we just took this average between here and here and shortened it and found the average between two and three? And then maybe we can find the average between five and six. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So what we're really doing between two and three seconds is we are taking the slope between that. So let's draw a line between two and three seconds. Okay. Boom. So there is our line. Now we have a linear line to look at. Maybe I should make that a little stronger there. We're making a linear line that tells us the average between two and three seconds. Okay. And now if we find the slope of this line, then we should be able to tell the average velocity that the cart was going between the second and the third, the second second and the third second. So what is the slope of this line? Well, from this point to this point, we go up a rise of one, two, three, four. Well, remember we're going up by fives each one, so we should say five, 10, 15, 20, right? And we have a run of one second. So the slope here between two and three, seconds is equal to a rise of 20 over a run of one, rise of 20 centimeters over a run of one second. So we have 20, 20 centimeters per second. We'll just leave it like that. Between the fifth and the sixth second, we can already notice by just putting our ruler up here that we're definitely not going to have the same slope, right? We notice that this line is definitely more steep than our initial line. So now we're going to try to find the slope of this line here. So that's going to tell us the average velocity between the fifth and the sixth second. So from this point to this point, we go up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. If we look here, we're about halfway between 40 and 45. We'll call that 42.5 centimeters on the rise, and the run is one second. So from here, let's call it here, slope between five and six seconds is a rise of 42.5 centimeters and a run of one second. So here the cart is going 42.5 centimeters per second. Here it was only going 20 centimeters per second. So that confirms our um, what we thought when we said that the line definitely got more steep. What we can see, remember these are telling us the average velocities, right? This is an average velocity. And this is an average velocity here. They're just the average velocity between two and three and the average velocity between five and six. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to something that is gonna be very helpful to us. And what we did between this point when we did the zero to six seconds is we shortened our time interval. Notice that we went from a six second time interval that really didn't tell us too much about what was happening. When we shortened it down to just a one second time interval and then took two to three and five to six, we were able to see a change in that velocity, right? From zero to six, there was no change. It was just the total average. By shortening that time interval to a one second time interval, we were able to say a more precise measurement about how the cart was moving. So looking back to that person that came in the room, we could now tell them a little more. We could say, well, it started at zero and between the second and third second, it went on average 20 centimeters per second. And then between the fifth and the sixth second, it was going 42.5 centimeters per second. So we're already being able to tell this person that the cart sped up between the second and third second and the fifth and the sixth second. So we're really working towards um, this this piece of information that's going to be really important to us. So let's break into that. So we want to keep shortening our time interval. And what if I suggested that we shorten our time interval, not from zero to six, down to one second, but what if we kept on shortening our time interval just to be at a single instant along the path of this motion? If we do that, we end up getting this thing called instantaneous velocity. And the way that we find instantaneous velocity is by drawing a tangent line to the curve. So let's go ahead and do that. So what if I said I want to find the instantaneous velocity at one second? Well, this is where our line is at one second. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to set it up just so it grazes the curve. And we're going to draw what we call a tangent line. And you can make this tangent line as big as you want. It's just representing that instant at one second, how fast it's going. Now, the slope of this line that I just drew 
is going to be the instantaneous instantaneous velocity at one second, okay? So how do we find the slope of this line? Well, we just need to find two points on this line. So we can go along here, if we're using grid paper, we should be able to find two spots that it crosses a point. So that looks, well, let's try to go at a second here. Let's try to do them at time seconds so that it's easier to calculate. Uh, let's see, at about four seconds, that's pretty good. We're right on one. And about six seconds, we're on one as well. So from here, now we're finding this is separate from the motion of the cart. We're just finding the slope of this line. We're using the same quantities on our x and y axis, though. So we have a rise of, remember, we're going by 5, so 5, 10, 15 over 2 seconds. So we have a rise of 15 centimeters over two seconds, so that simplifies to 7.5 centimeters per second. So at one second, right as that card is passing through one second, it had a velocity of 7.5 centimeters per second. Now let's go up to, let's say, uh, three seconds. So if I go up to three seconds, I'm gonna line this up just like that, tangent to the line, and draw just like this, and we'll do the same thing. So let's try to find two points. You can also always use the zero point. So let's try to use the zero point. So right there, it crosses the zero. Again, I can't repeat this enough, that we're not, these lines do not represent any of the motion. It's just the slope, the slope at that instant, but we're using the x and y axis. So we have a point here. If we go up, let's see if we can find a good line up here. Five seconds, okay, five seconds. We're at about that line, we're at about 80. So, that's pretty simple then. We, we know we're going up 80, so at two seconds, at two seconds, we need the rise over the run of this line. So we went up the rise of 80 centimeters, and a run of, let's see, from here, five seconds, well that's one second, two, three, three and a half, so 80 centimeters in three and a half seconds. I'm not going to do that one in my head. Let's do 80 divided by 3.5, and we get 22.8 centimeters. Great, okay, now if we keep going, I'm gonna go ahead and find two more instantaneous velocities, okay? And I'm gonna speed through this. Okay, so what I went ahead and did is I drew two more instantaneous velocity, I drew two more tangent lines here, and what I did is I found the rise over the run of those two slopes, um, and I got a 39.2 centimeters per second, and I got 55 uh, centimeters per second. So if we look at those numbers, the instantaneous velocity at one second was 7.5 centimeters per second, at two it was 22.8, at three, or sorry, at five it was 39.2, and at six it was 55 centimeters per second. Now, by using that instantaneous velocity, we can tell so much more information to someone that came in the room and said, well, we know that at the velocity at one second, it was 7.5, two, blah, 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 three, four. We can tell them that this, the velocity of the cart was gradually increasing. So by using that instantaneous velocity, we're able to be more and more precise. Now. Our next task is going to be to, let's see if we can plot our data 
of our velocities. So in this open space right here, I'm going to make a new data table. Okay. And in this data table, sorry, this paper is getting a little cluttered, but we got a lot going on here. We're going to do time here in seconds. And I'm going to graph the instantaneous, instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity in centimeters per second, right? That's our unit. So let's start. We have a zero. Let's see, where did we found it? We found it at one second. We found it at two seconds. We found it at five seconds. And we found it at six seconds. Okay, so at zero, we know the cart was standing still. So its instantaneous velocity was zero. At one second, we had 7.5. At two seconds, we had 22. Sorry, this should be three seconds. Apologies. This should be 22.8. At five, it was 39.2. And at six, it was 55. Sorry, we had a little cut off there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and on a new sheet of paper, we're going to graph the instantaneous velocity, uh, the relationship of the instantaneous velocity over time. Okay, so I moved my data table to a new sheet of paper, and now I'm going to make another graph of this data relating the instantaneous velocity on our y-axis and our time on our x-axis. So let's go ahead and set that up. I'm going to do this at a fast speed because you guys are already pros at this. All right, so we've got our graph axes scaled. Same thing, I did six seconds down here. Here I chose to go by two so I could get my graph as big as it could because our highest point is 55 and we should be right, this should be about 55 right there. We're in our range. Always want to try to get that graph as large as we can. So now let's go ahead and plot these points. Again, you guys are pros at plotting points. So I'm going to go ahead and do this at fast speed. Okay, so I've went ahead and I've plotted my points here. And notice we have a little bit of a different relationship. Oh, got to put our zero, zero point here. Notice that how our data points are lined up. Um, this one looks like it's a little high, a little high there. But if I put a ruler down here, we notice that we're back towards our linear sort of relationship. So I'm going to draw a best fit line and this this top one's going to throw it a little off, but that's okay. Just a little funky data. Our best fit line through these points. There we go. Okay, so that's our best fit. Kind of helps out with these points. These are a little under, that's a little over. So now we have this linear relationship as the velocity, instantaneous velocity and time from this data that we got from this original graph back here, okay? So we must ask ourselves now, what if we found the slope of this line? And what would that mean? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just start working through it and then we can ask those questions. So let's find the slope of this line. I see at, let's see, at about four seconds, at about four seconds, we're right here. Notice that this is a linear line, so the slope is going to be anywhere. Uh, anywhere you find the slope is going to be the slope at any point on the line. Um, so we can choose any two points along this line. I like to choose points that have good whole numbers in the time so that we can do easy calculations. So here we have at four seconds, we're at 32, between 32 and 34, so we're at 33. I'll make a little mark there, that's 33. We're at 33 centimeters per second. And then of course we can always use our zero zero because that's our starting point. So the slope of this line is, I'll write it all out, rise over run. We went up 33 and we went over from zero to four, we went over to four. Now let's think about what our units are. 
on that. I'm going to zoom right in on this. Our units, what is our unit on the 33? Well, we went up on the y-axis. Oh, zoom back out. We went up on the y-axis 33 centimeters per second. Centimeters per second. And we went over four seconds. So if we do our calculation, let's simplify that number. 33 divided by 4 is going to be 8.25. It's a nice number. 8.25. Now our units are going to be centimeters per second per second. Let's write that out. Centimeters per second over seconds. So that is the slope of that line. Now let's talk about it real quick, what that actually means. This is the instantaneous velocity versus time. So this is saying how is the velocity changing as time progresses? How is it changing? Can we put a number to how that changes? And the fact is, yes, if we can find the slope of this line, right, because a slope tells us how a relationship is changing, right, how is the relationship between instantaneous velocity and time, how is that number changing? We can see that when we find that slope, we get 8.25 centimeters per second every second. So this means that the cart was gaining 8.25 centimeters per second of speed every single second. So it was increasing its speed by 8.25 centimeters per second every second that it was in motion. And we're going to spend the rest of this week talking about what that means to increase your speed per second. Okay, so the goal of this entire lab is to come out with this value telling us how is the cart's speed changing. Remember, that was what we first observed, that the cart was changing its speed. Um, now, if we were to come in, if someone was to come in and we were going to talk to them about the motion of the cart, we could simply tell them that it started at zero, right? It started at zero, and its speed increased all the way out for six seconds, and the increase of that speed was 8.25 centimeters per second every second. And we have these instantaneous velocities to prove that, right? How is this velocity changing as time progresses? Well, it's right here. If we want to find the change, we just find the slope. So we've come to our conclusion. We found this value that tells us how our speed is increasing, which was our original observation of the cart when it went down the track. So congratulations. You guys have put in a lot of work. Hopefully this is making sense to you. If not, come and check in with me ASAP. All right, Doksha.